Now we're going to go back to the beginning and watch this, and it's not going to be the smoothest thing in the world. Press the home key and play this guy and watch. It'll go suddenly left, right, that kind of stuff. It'll look kind of clumsy. And get to the end. And, and we're going to use rotation later to get this thing to spin around. Okay, so that's how that looks. It's, uh, I think the camera's too high. And I think it's, you know, got that problem with the sudden motion. But there's the general motion. Now we can fix the sudden motion now. And we'll, we can do it also to the, to the crane later. But we'll do it now for this one so you can see how it works. And the way you do that is by going over here to the so-called graph editor. And this can be daunting looking, but I think you'll come to appreciate it. So I'll click on the graph editor. And I'll click on this to say what we're showing. We're going to, it says auto select graph type. Well, it's showing what are called values, which is what I want. But I want to make sure it shows values. So I click on edit value graph instead. And if I click on X here, if I click on X, it selects all of those keyframes. It makes them all active. Just as if I clicked away here and they're all blue here. So I click back to that. And if I right, so I click on it again to make sure they're all active. If I right click on one of them and go to keyframe interpolation, I could have done this in the timeline as well, but go to keyframe interpolation and change the temporal, the time interpolation to Bezier and click OK. Suddenly little handles appear on all of those nodes, all of those vertexes there that allow me to control the motion through those spots. So if I play this now, let's see what happens. It looks like hardly anything's changed, right? It's a little bit smoother. There we go. And we can now control that a little bit better. And the first one, the first guy is kind of abrupt. And the way we resolve that is by add, we can add another keyframe out here someplace so that this keyframe has two handles instead of only one. But that's, that's well, so oops, I'll undo that. So now we can work on these keyframes individually. And to do that, I click away so they're not all selected. And I can click on one of them, for example. And that shows handles for the preceding and the following. And that allows me to adjust the shape of the curve. Now notice I work on one side at once here. If I hold down the Alt or the Option key and click, then it locks them together. So they start off, if I click on this, this one here, if I start off, they start off being broken like that. But if I hold on the Alt or the Option key and drag, then they lock up. And let go of the Alt the Option, then they all stay locked up like that. If I extend it like this, that smooths out the curve. So this is how you control the, how those guys pass by each of those, those stained glass windows there. Hold on the Ultra Option key to lock them together or not, depending on what you want to do. So I look at the most abrupt ones. These are the most abrupt ones here. So these are the ones that need the most smoothing out. Now it's smooth out the ones that I think, you know, look like they need the most smoothing. And if I drag this to the right, that'll change where it happens in time like so. So that's how I would work on that. And it's, I don't want to show you every single one, but that's the process to make things smooth out. You go to the graph editor like this, and you switch on Bezier temporal keyframes, and then you can adjust these handles either individually like this, or if I hold down the the Option key and click, then it'll lock them together. There we go. I try it again. There we go. Well, I know we can do this. Hang on a second. Click on you again. It's not cooperating. I'll alter Option. Drag. There you go. Now they're all working together. They don't have to work together. You can work them separately. But working together sometimes makes a smoother transition. Mm -hmm.